of June and sold me my first car. It was a teal Grand Am. And I had it for three hours, showing it off, which is probably why what happened happened. Showing it off to my mother and my sister, and it got hit. It was a brand new Pontiac. But this gentleman sold me that car and felt sorry for me. I found out maybe a month or so ago that he's also a poet. So he's shared one time here at Poetic Rhythms, but I love to welcome my buddy there, Doug, to the mic. And I told you all
Dr. Seuss and Mother Goose were having tea one day. Your pastry looks tasty, the doctor said in a driving way. Got them from the cupboard at Old Mother Hubbard's just past the three, three pigs' house, the one that's standing, the brick one that beat back the wolf, she said, as she was handing him, handing him a slice of pie. That little Jackie Horner, man, what a barn, was Dr. Seuss's reply. Look at his thumbprint in this slice. It ain't cool. It ain't even nice. And that Jack Spratt and his bad wife, I can't figure out all my life. For the brilliant cat hatter that I am, how she could eat the fat and eat the lean, but not my green eggs and ham. <laughs> <laughs> you seen little Sally Walker, the little hip shaker? How about the butcher and the baker and the candlestick maker? <laughs> and a little black Sambo. I heard he went Rambo and told up the bride. <laughs> Called Brer Rabbit a problem, because he thought Sambo would rob a maid. But he was cool and stopped acting a fool when he saw his cousin, the tall baby. <laughs> oh, I don't know about these children today, Mother Scoot said with a frown. I ain't seen such a mess, well, I guess, since London Bridges came falling down. <laughs> not, since, not since someone sat in a three bear chair and someone slept in their bed. Not even with your silly cat with the wear and a hat on his head. Well, it ain't getting no better. No, it ain't. I say it ain't. Said Dr. Seuss in his usual way of being quaint. Because today they don't read, and half of them came right. And they use a TV screen and buttons to fight. Monsters, ninjas, aliens, and the police. Yes, the police. They don't want to be the good guy. They all want to be the thief. And the game most popular of all those bars, well, I guess they call it, Grand Theft Auto. And these kids tell stories you wouldn't want to hear. With beats so strong, they'll bust your ear. Little baby boys who can't even walk will learn how to rap before they learn how to talk. And if the itsy bitsy spider will come down that water spout, they'll pull out an Uzi and blow his brains out. <laughs> Mother Goose just hung her head. She looked at Dr. Seuss and said, we tried to do good with our nursery lives, but I guess we're now behind the times. Someone else must take the lead and give these children some new things to read that speak to their life and not their death. But who do this? One that's new or one that's left? <clears throat> they sat in silence and sipped their tea. Their concern for the children was easy to see. But what was needed and who would do it? Better ask the old lady who lived in the ship. Down a yellow brick road, a pied piper can beckon. Through our children's books and bring them to record. With themselves, their world, the things they should know to make them survive as bright and grow. Though of lesser acclaim than the doctor and the mother, we writers and artists have a task like none of us. The very tough thing that is ours to do is to answer Mother Goose's question. Here my show, Black and Blue.